This is an audio introduction to a short documentary film about the making of the contemporary dance piece Feathers, which was created as part of a project to explore how to make dance more accessible to visually impaired people. The film itself is around eight minutes long, and as there are interviews throughout, there will be very minimal through description. The choreographer of Feathers, Sandrine Monin, is interviewed in a light-filled room, sitting in front of a window with an assortment of glossy potted succulents behind her. Sandrine is a white woman in her thirties, wearing a burgundy shirt. She has short hair that's brown at the roots, but with a long blonde fringe swept over to one side. Maria Capsali is the sound and movement interaction dramaturgist for Feathers. She's interviewed in an office, in front of a bookshelf of ring binders and a messy notice board with children's drawings pinned to it. She's a white woman in her late thirties, with glossy black shoulder-length hair and dark eyes, wearing a high-necked blue shirt. As Sandrine and Maria speak, footage from Feathers often plays on the screen. Feathers is performed by five female presenting dancers of various ages and ethnicities, dressed in loose pyjama-style clothing. Although there's a mix of visually impaired and sighted dancers in the piece, it's not immediately obvious who is sighted and who's not in the video. All move without assistance through the space, without any obvious aids. The style of the dance is contemporary and mixes everyday movements like running, walking, staggering with more traditionally choreographed movements like elegant swoops of the arm or legs balletically lifted. The dance takes place on a black-floored performance space. The dancers use various props, sometimes they carry small round lights which they wave through the air or arrange on the floor. At other times, a pair of dancers hold a blanket between them, pushing and pulling at the fabric that connects them. My name is Sandrine Monin and I'm the director and choreographer of Feathers. A clip of the dance. Feathers is a project that explores dance and accessibility for blind and visually impaired people. We focused on making dance classes and dance workshops more accessible for people with visual impairments and also on how to create work with performers who were partially sighted. We also worked a lot with sound. So we worked with music and perception of music and sounds, how different sound and different track can really influence our moods and also how it can change the way we move just through sounds. Uh, we worked with audio description, really embedded within the work, so not just as an add-on that you kind of bring onto the work, but how can you bring audio description embedded within the work and within the performers. And then we worked with a uh, new technology that's called ECOM. I have been developing a technology for sound and movement interaction. Maria. And at some point I had this idea that this technology would be useful for making art accessible to people who are partially sighted and blind. So I used this technology for creating multisensory engagement with artworks and then I used this technology uh, for an interactive installation that took place in Stage at Leeds. Um, and that's where I met Sadrin. So Sadrin came to the installation because she was interested in making dance accessible to people with visual impairment and to blind people. In the project there were professional dancers and there were also participants with visual impairment uh, who took part as performers. Sandrine. Some of the tools and methods we've explored are uh, improvisation. We worked a lot at improvisation and awakening our imagination, all the other senses, so everything but the sight. So we spend a lot of time with our eyes closed actually, up to 45 minutes at times. So really learning to, to be comfortable with the darkness. And that's people with visual impairment and also with the sight dancers we've been working with and myself. How does it feel to just close your eyes and to be in the darkness with yourself and then to trust that your body can actually move with your eyes closed and then your body can move with other people with your eyes closed. That was really interesting and really helped finding that, that confidence and that trust. We also worked with contact improvisation and touch. So learning to give your weight, learning to receive weight, learning to guide and be guided, learning to lift and be lifted. And we really worked all on equal ground. So everybody was trying everything to their own level of comfort. So like there was really building up and progression, but everybody, whether it was a sighted dancer or a visual impaired artist, we were all trying to do everything. 
We also worked with lights and props, so we found that light can be a nice uh, and useful tool to uh, focus um, what to look at or to guide through light. And then props, just like ropes or blankets, were actually a really good anchoring point. So if you hold the blanket, it actually helps grounding, anchoring and knowing where you are. So that was an interesting tool that um, we use in the workshops and in the performance. And one thing to keep in mind is that every site loss is unique. So you need to make sure that you get to know your participants and you need to allow some flexibility and tailoring around your offering because everyone is different. It's been a wonderful opportunity. Helen Davis, performer. To feel free, mm. to feel loved, to feel part of something, to feel equal. Sandrine. It's important to create a safe environments and to build trust. That's one thing that was very clear from the beginning. So we spent time identifying how to create that safe environment, how to build trust between the participants and with myself and everyone uh, involved. It's just been absolutely... Sue Whitehouse. Amazing and liberating. Performer. And freeing. I don't know how to put it into words. It's just made me feel so energised and involved in what we've been doing. And we've been energised every day and we've been looked after every day and we've caressed each other every day and we've all <laughs> loved each other and it's, it's all been an absolute joy. But I felt so loved and involved in everything that we've done. Mm. So, so far we've run over 20 workshops in blind and visually impaired community. We had six weeks research in the studio with uh, blind and visually impaired artists and sighted dancers. Maria. And we started working in the drop-in sessions together. So these were open sessions for people to come along and they could do, there were six of them, they could do as many or as little as they wanted. Um, and in those first sessions, we tried different activities. And one of the things we began to kind of hone into is how does the technology inform or relate to the embodied experience of those with visual impairment. Research took place in London, in Bradford and in Leeds. And so far we've created about 45 minutes piece of work that we shared uh, in Leeds. Now for the future of, the, of this project, uh, I would love to, to create the full length work that we then end up touring. Uh, Within the performance, I'd love, well, around the performance, we engage with the community in the place. We invite them to watch, but also to take part in workshops. Uh, I'd like to continue to engage with the group we, we built up in Yorkshire, so Leeds and Bradford, on a more regular bas basis. Um, and we just kind of bring the gift of dance to like more people because. Um, the response, the feedback and the impact of the work has just been incredible. Like we, we've really seen a boost in confidence, a sense of empowerment. Um, and I really want to just keep going and keep it, push it further because I think it's more than dancing. It's really connecting. It's connecting to yourself, to your body, it's connecting to others and eventually it's connecting to the whole world. All five dancers end in a circle with arms around each other. Text appears supported using public funding by Arts Council England, by the Genesis Foundation, Cala Sangam, Yorkshire Dance, University of Leeds and other supporters. Music by Roberto D. Rusconi. Videography by Simon K. Allen. Editor, Paul Dumphy. Director, Sandrine Manin. Choreography, Sandrine Manin, in collaboration with the performers. Performers, Helen Davies, Maddie Irwin, Mayoa Ogunaike, Kamit Sang, Sue Whitehouse with thanks to creative collaborators. Audio description was Timna Fiebert for Vocalize. The film ends.